Hello everyone, Professor Philip Travis here, um, War and Society, and uh, just really quick, it's going to be kind of a, a brief announcement today, uh, but your, uh, your, your bonus factoid for this week is uh, Maximus, um, one, of our, one of our dogs. So we have a lot of animals in our house, and uh, sometimes I like to show them off in uh, the announcements. So today Maximus is our Pomeranian, he's got a big name for a very small dog. But uh, he's a really uh, he's a really cool little dog. So uh, this week's factoid, uh, nothing too complicated or history related necessarily, though Maximus is a very historical name, um, is Maximus, our Pomeranian. So this week, all we have to do this week, I say all we have to do because it's kind of a, all right, Max, you can get down. Um, I say all, but it's kind of a, a, a not kind of. It is a major assignment this week. We have our exam this week. It'll be due on Sunday. It's the only thing we have to do this week. Uh, there's no discussion forum, no quizzes, obviously, or anything like that this week. Um, just simply the exam. Uh, the exam is an essay assignment. And um, so this is what, and of course, the prompt and all the details for the essay, um, that's all in there for you. So please follow the directions. But before um, I make, I'm going to make this a short one today. Um, but I just want everyone to kind of fully understand uh, what I'm looking for in terms of how this how this uh, essay is written. First of all, the essay must be written uh, with Chicago style footnotes. You don't need a bibliography. You don't need a, a cover page or anything like that. But I do want Chicago style footnotes. So please see those. Uh, I have a link to uh, uh, Chicago styles online sort of. Um, citation style. So make sure you use, it has to be footnotes and they must be in Chicago style. Um, so follow that, you know, you don't have to memorize them. Just make sure when you're putting the footnotes in, just look at the Chicago style so you can see how to, how to, how to reference a book. All citations need page numbers. And this is what I want in terms of sort of the content uh, of your paper. This is, this is an exam, but it's a, uh, but it's written as a, as an essay. Um, what I want is you need to um, first of all, develop a central thesis, okay? But it needs to be a central thesis that you can connect the main book that we just finished reading or are finishing right now, Democracy's Prisoner, with um, at least two of the other readings prior. So I want to see you find a way to make a connection between the Philippine-American War readings and the World War I readings, Okay. And um, I want Democracy's Prisoner to be the backbone. So one thing I'm going to be looking at here is the extent to which Democracy's Prisoner is used and referenced. And if it's not referenced at all, it's basically an incomplete assignment. And if there's just like one footnote in there kind of thrown in at the end, then you're going to lose a pretty good amount of points there uh, because I expect it to really be built on, um, on, 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 on the Democracy's Prisoner book. Um, remember, the thesis of Democracy's Prisoner uh, is that um, the case of Eugene V. Debs really resulted in a reinterpretation and a reevaluation of the First Amendment, which, of course, we know under the leadership of Supreme Court Justice Oliver Wendell Holmes that you have ultimately in the aftermath of the First World War the development sort of a, of a redefining of people's free speech and their rights to freedom of speech during um, particularly during wartime. And of course, it gave rise to the ACLU. So when you look at um, thinking about how to use that book and make connections to, say, the Philippine-American War um, or other aspects of World War I that we read from, like, Herring, um, you can look to things like, um, and you can think broadly, right, about uh, individual rights during wartime. And it doesn't have to be limited. You don't have to limit it to first the First Amendment. You can just you know, use the First Amendment case as democracy's prisoner as one of the examples and make connections. Uh, you could connect um, individual rights to human rights, right? We had the issue of, of, of torture and these types of things and imperialism in the Philippine-American War. Uh, we could link um, the issues of individual rights in American politics. You could look at the role that war plays in shaping American politics, right? So we saw with the Philippine-American War... Um, that the Philippine-American War, the controversy surrounding it, was very much played out um, in, the, um, um, in the election of, of 1900. 
And uh, we saw these political disputes in 1899 and 1900 over the Philippine-American War. And uh, we saw the role that that played in sort of shaping uh, the, ro the role that the war played in shaping the next sort of um, age of leaders. And so uh, whether it's shaping um, the political discourse in World War I around isolationism and internationalism, um, you can connect that to human rights. You can connect that to a political debate over free speech. Uh, so there's a lot of broad ways to connect that. Uh, be creative. Make sure you use at least three sources, including the Democracy's Prisoner book. Make sure your essay is, again, backboned in Democracy's Prisoner. Make sure I want to, I want to really see that you're really reading that book. Um, and then draw connections to whichever of two of the others that we've read prior. Uh, we had a herring reading on America becoming a world power. We had uh, the Miller reading um, on uh, the Philippine-American War. And we had the herring reading on World War I. And when you cite those, um, you know, the citation information, those were scanned PDFs from one of my, my collections. But um, uh, you should have the information there to cite those. They're cited as a book. Make sure you use the page number. If the page number was was cut off, uh, then just kind of do the best you can to look in the PDF to say which uh, which page it is in the PDF, and, and that's fine. I'm not going to be, um, I'm not going to be, you know, uh, you know, cutting hairs on that because you saw this in a PDF. So, um, so make sure you have a specific point uh, in the introduction. Set the paper up in the introduction. This is what the paper's about. This is what the paper's going to do. Uh, establish a, a precise, clear, specific overall point, a thesis point, and then use the evidence from Democracy's Prisoner and the other readings you choose to defend that point and kind of be creative and then make sure you sum it up in a conclusion. So uh, make sure you follow those guidelines and uh, let's have a great week. Let me know if you have any questions. I said it was going to be a short announcement and it's not. It's seven minutes. I apologize. Post the extra credit factoid down in the extra credit discussion forum for your bonus point added to a test score at the end of the term. Maximus, our little Pomeranian. And let's have a really great week. Good luck.